Hello, how you doing? And yeah, I've been listening to all the little stuff y'all been saying. <laughs> From the looks of it, Drizzy's heard it too. And he's ready. He's ready for all of the nonsense and the foolery you guys have tried to put on him in the past month. You guys want to see him lose so bad that you're really to back your cart on a horse to somebody you don't even listen to. <laughs> Y'all won't even go out and buy that guy's LP. I bet y'all ain't even going to the tour. But yet, y'all waiting on Drizzy, though. And he's sitting back like, hmm. I'm waiting on this uh, surgical summer. <laughs> y'all keep talking about. I'm ready for it. And I believe him. Now that he didn't drop this trailer for the new album, so now it's like, okay, it's it's really feeling like it's here, it's coming. Everything is ready to go. Ain't gonna be no last minute. Hold on, we got some update, some upload issues, and none of that foolery. It's on. And it's time for it. So this surgical summer you talking about, you getting ready to see it. Summer just started. And we heard all the pretenders come out with their albums, except for Nas. Now, it's time for that real. Time for what everybody's been waiting on. This the Avengers. <laughs> this that Avengers album. This was a, this the album everybody get out the way from. They know it's coming. Well, what you can expect on this surgical summer album? The Scorpion. It's going to be a transition to take you from adolescence, young teenager, to 30-year-old man. Because you guys don't remember is that Drake has barely been doing this 10 years on this level. And throughout that dominance for the past 10 years, Drake throughout this whole process, remained humble, chivalrous, and always gave you guys great music. Right when you guys keep saying, oh, this is the one he's gonna fall off, this one he's gonna fall off, this one he's gonna fall off, and he keep coming up and staying on top. Now, You're going to hear him ex extend and ascend himself to manhood. All the adolescent stuff is time. He's going to start growing up. Normally when they grow up is when they're preparing for their exit. <laughs> because it's going to be like, he's going to get to a point now. It's like, what am I going to rap about now? And that normally happens to an artist. You need something to challenge you to get you up in the morning. Now, if some people who just in it for the bag, that don't happen to them. They be doing it today 65 because they don't care what they put out. They gonna put out whatever they think is just hot. But a real artist care about their work. 
a little artist, a real artist say, you know what? I know that's what's hot right now. That's what's on the top 40, but I don't feel like doing that. It's not my vibe. I'm thinking of trying some new stuff, but I'm going to sit back and wait till something hit me. I'm just not going to just make an album just to be making it because I can grab a bag because I got a name. You got a name because this is the process you do. People trust the work you put out. So even though you might have an indication of something's going to come on, you know, because of the music and everything with the video, it's an anticipation of some Drake going through something if you watch that video. But as you can tell from the photo, you ready. He's ready for this surgical summer. And believe me, don't think he ain't going to touch on these subjects. People are going to get annihilated. And even these little hating little fans who sat there, heard Quentin Miller answer the question when they said, did you write for Pusha T? They asked him that. And what did he say? Oh, we worked together. We did a couple of songs. He didn't say, no, I didn't write for him. But yet, he said that about Drake. Uh, yeah, we worked. We collaborated on some songs. Oh, he wrote for Drake. But y'all you know, say, hey, well, he said he worked for Christian T. Well, he didn't say that. He said they collaborated on some songs. <laughs> now, all of a sudden, y'all know what collaboration means. Oh, my God. <laughs> the hate is leaking through your pores. Leaking through your pores. You know, everybody in the world, every rapper in the world, his ears are going to be glued to their phones, to their car stereos. They're going to want to hear every word and syllable come out of Drake's mouth. That Friday is going to be an explosion of videos from everybody throwing here, there, everywhere. Now, only thing we really truly know is that the Scary Hours EP that came out that got Diplomatic Immunity, God's Plan, and Nice For What are supposed to be on the album right along with I'm Upset. The executive producer is 40 and Oliver el -Kai. So, that's all we really know. They've been keeping everything close to the chest, which is the way you're supposed to do it when you get ready to drop a cl classic. But you could tell from the album cover with the signature and the scorpion on there, and the look on his face is a man who's, is, it's a guy who's growing into manhood. Like, he's not the same guy he was on the previous LPs and all the, this is a more mature album, seem like. And I'm saying this off of the theme of it. And then the vibe is that this album finna be something special. So he's gonna show you guys what class is, and he's gonna try to take you guys to another level. Like he took y'all to one dance. Everybody wants to make Caribbean songs now. <laughs> Drake puts out one dance and now and then makes it global and that was a big risk in his career and now all of a sudden everybody wants to go to the Caribbean we gotta make a Caribbean song that's the way to do it people like it let's jump on that bandwagon let's ride the boat ah! then passion fruit come Everybody wanted to ride with it at night, right? So listen to some passion fruit. See, it was only you guys who really didn't understand. You know, most of these guys here in America, we feel because we have not traveled, the majority of us have not traveled broadly around the world, we forget that island Caribbean music is universal. It's huge. 
all the Latin markets basically listen to Caribbean and island music. They love it. Your girlfriends and everybody, your homegirl, they all take vacations to go to the Caribbean islands and dance to this music. I can't think of anybody who don't like Caribbean music. From whites, Asians, and the age brackets, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80 year olds, they take trips to go to the islands and dance to this music. It's universal. Now, you see how big it is. When one dance come out, it becomes like one of the largest records out of this time. Then people start to understand. Every time they think Drake is going to fall off, he do something to extend, to, to excel himself to another plateau. And one dance did that. Hotline Bling did that. And somebody's like, oh, he just copied off them with their song. And why they song didn't take off? When Drake did Hotline Bling, it became a smash. People don't realize that the video made that song even hotter. Because he, he's doing all these crazy dances that people were doing in the streets. But he made it popular because he put it on a video. And Drake was doing these weird dances. And everybody's like, man, that is crazy. He's doing these dances. And it made it hot. People hated the song, but they couldn't stop watching it. It was memes about it, everything. It was genius. When you keep having success over and over again, and you're not doing the same formula, something else is different. There's a new sound. There's a new message. There's a new momentum. That is a growth of an artist. Most of you kids are young. You don't understand it. So that's why you can't get it. But the people who create the music, they know because they want to copy that. They want it. Look at Kanye. He had to go get them for yikes because he know, like, this Quentin Miller guy ain't cutting it. <laughs> I need Drake. Get me Drake. Drake came down to Wyoming, got in there, and made your boat float. Now, what's the best song on Kanye's week album? Yikes. And why is that? Because Drake made it hot. And none of you even knew about it till later. You guys love Yikes. Then you found out Drake, Drake wrote it. Uh, well, he only did like a hook. Uh, I ain't even the part I like. <laughs> Y'all cannot give credit to where it's due. You're too anxious to root for somebody's downfall that you won't allow yourself to enjoy the music. That's the sad part. I can see if the music is bad. I mean, like, man, this music suck. It don't. And you know it. So the only thing you can say is somebody else wrote it and try to take credit away from him. it would be like, well, Quentin Miller ain't there no more. So who is doing it now? It's somebody. He's got a whole team of writers. <laughs> Where are they? <laughs> Why people call him then? Why don't they just say, send us Drake team of writers? I'm quite sure they're right for some other people. Sometimes you just got to say, congratulations, man. You're doing your thing. That's just it, man. But you guys, then you try to insinuate other people out of haters. That's the bizarre part. I'm like, wow, how did everybody else become haters because you dislike Drake? That's, that's weird. <laughs> yeah. That's what I'm saying. Don't worry. Drake, Drake ready for this surgical summer you y'all keep talking about. Yeah, he's ready for that. So, get ready. Only a couple more days.
get ready. The boy Carcino, I'm out. Don't forget to subscribe.